Theorem 811 tells us that a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each of its diagonals are perpendicular. Thus, if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are automatically perpendicular. Also, this works the other way. If we have a figure in which the diagonals are perpendicular, then it must be a rhombus. That's what we, we mean by if and only if. Means if diagonals are perpendicular, then it's a rhombus. It also means if it's a rhombus, then diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, let's move on to the next one, theorem 812. A parallelogram is a rhombus, again, if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. All right, so what we see is if we have a figure and it's a rhombus, then the diagonals will bisect the angles. Similarly, if we have a figure and the diagonals bisect the angles, then we know it's a rhombus. So if rhombus, then diagonals bisect angles. And if diagonals bisect angles, then it's a rhombus. Again, that's because it's an if and only if. It works in both directions. All right, theorem 813. A parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So if we have a rectangle, then the two diagonals not only bisect each other, but they're congruent to one another. So in this picture, AC is congruent to BD. Similarly, if diagonals are congruent to one another, then we must have a rectangle. So if a rectangle, then diagonals are congruent. If diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle. Now notice all of these theorems had to do with diagonals. So to keep them straight, if diagonals are perpendicular, it's a rhombus. If they bisect an angle, it's a rhombus. If the diagonals are congruent to one another, then it is a rectangle. Example two. If you're good with those theorems, if you're good with that classification, move on to example two. If not, go back, review, make sure you understand how the diagonals relate to both a rhombus and a rectangle.